Hello everyone, welcome to this Let's Play video for Kerkerkruip. I'm Victor Gijsbers, I'm the lead developer of uh, this roguelike. And I'm going to show you how the game works. I'm going to talk you through a game of Kerkerkruip. One which I'll hopefully win rather than being humiliatingly defeated in a couple of minutes. Uh, we're currently looking at the rogues gallery which shows which monsters I've defeated in previous games. But that's not important right now. I'm going to press the N of new game and we'll play an apprentice difficulty game of Kerkerkruip. So, new game. The dungeon has been generated. Welcome to Kerkerkruip. As always, we start in the entrance hall. And uh, as you can see, there are two items in the entrance hall. If you've ever played Kerkerkruip before, you'll probably be able to follow what I'm saying because you'll see what is the important information on the screen. If you haven't played Kerkerkruip and you're confused or you can't follow it, just pause the video for a moment and read up on what's on the uh, on the screen. Okay? I'm going to uh, to play at a, at the pace I would normally play, but you can always pause the video and just read everything that's on the screen. So I'm going to take everything that's here, which are the scroll labeled Maliati and the Essence of Rage. So let's examine the Essence of Rage for a moment. What it does is uh, it gives you plus two body, plus two spirit, minus two mind, plus one attack, which is of course good, right? Two of your three faculties will be increased by two, one will be decreased by two, so that's an, uh, a win on average. And plus one attack is really good, but you'll also be unable to retreat. That's really bad at the start of the game. Okay, so the essence of rage is something you only want to take at the end when you know which monsters you're, you, uh, you have to defeat, you know where they are, you know you don't need to retreat anymore. That's the moment to use the essence of rage. I'm not going to use it right now. I've also got this uh, unidentified scroll. I'm not going to read it right now. I may read it later. I may also wait to see if I find some stuff that can help me identify it before I need to do that. Okay, there are three exits, north, east, and up. It really doesn't matter which I'm going to take first. And we're going to explore the dungeon, going to find some monster that we can take on, and uh, if we find something we can't take on, we can always retreat. So let's go north, because it's the first one listed. All right, so in this um, room we find another scroll. We also find the Wisps of Pain. Now if we examine the Wisps, we'll see that they are a level 1 creature. Level 1 creature, that's good. I mean, I want to kill a level 1 creature. But the Wisps of Pain are special. The Wisps of Pain are special for two reasons. The first is that uh, they've got a lot of damage resistance. It's really hard to damage the Wisps of Pain. It's a lot easier to do if I can find a more damaging weapon than the Rapier I start with. But the second, the more important thing is this. Once you kill the Wisps of Pain, you will get, you will be in pain. As long as you have the power of the Wisps of Pain, you're in pain. And the amount of pain you're in depends on the highest level creature that you've killed up to that time. So if I kill the Wisps of Pain now, I'll be in only a little pain. If I kill them later, once I've killed some really tough monsters, high level monsters, I'll be in a lot of pain. Now being in pain is bad, but once I live through that, once I uh, get rid of of the power of the wisps, I'll get a big and uh, lasting bonus to all of my faculties, to body, mind and spirit, that's equal to the amount of pain I was in. So the wisps of pain, the way their power works, makes it really good to kill them near the end of the game, when you've already killed a level 3 or a level 4 creature, because that's going to give you the biggest bonuses. So I don't want to, uh, I don't want to take on the wisps of pain now. Now the good thing is that they're not very dangerous in terms of uh, doing damage to me. They can't do damage to me, they can only hurt my faculties basically. So I'm going to take the risk to take that scroll labeled Sistrop Years Gaff um, before getting out of here. So they're positioning themselves around me but I'm just going to retreat. And, and because they don't have an attack, they can't actually hurt me. Okay, back at the entrance hall. Uh, let's look for another level 1 creature, because there are always two level 1 creatures in the dungeon. So let's go east. Ah, and in the drawing room we can see a stunning young woman in a simple monk's robe. And that woman is Miranda. And Miranda is a level 1 creature. So let's, uh, let's go and kill Miranda. And let's try to kill Miranda before we 
uh, pick up any of the uh, the items in this room because that's going to take us a turn that she can uh, attack us. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to attack her outright. I want to concentrate first because concentration gives me uh, the kind of bonuses to attack and to damage that I will need to hit and damage Miranda. And Miranda also concentrates. She seeks to calm within. There are three levels of concentration. The first level of concentration, as you can see here in the uh, right part of the screen, gives plus two attack and no bonus to damage. Now I'm going to take the risk and uh, try to get another level of concentration, which gives me plus four attack and plus two damage. Miranda does the same thing. So right now, if I uh, were to get a third level of concentration, the third level of concentration is really good, plus eight attack, plus four damage, but Miranda would undoubtedly attack me and if she hits me and damages me, then I will very probably lose all my concentration. So I'm going to play it uh, more safely, I think, and attack Miranda right now. Alright, she jumps aside, that means she's dodging, but I easily beat her defense rating and deal 4 damage, wounding her to 5 health. Now she concentrates, and uh, I concentrate, and she jumps towards me, intent on stunning. Uh, that's her, one of her specials, is that she can stun me. Um, which would give me a penalty to body, mind, and spirit. That's not a good thing. So I'm going to try to dodge, parry. Hmm. Um, well, let's look at Miranda again. Miranda carries a pair of nunchucks. So let's look at the nunchucks. So the nunchucks can be parried for two and can be dodged for two. That means that it doesn't matter whether I'm going to parry or whether I'm going to dodge. So let's just dodge. Phew! Okay, well, Miranda uh, doesn't roll enough to actually uh, overcome my defense rating. I'm going to, uh, to make use of this situation to concentrate once more. Ah, and the initiative system has allowed me to, you know, uh, partly by luck, get another uh, action. Will I concentrate for the third time to get this massive damage bonus? Or will I attack? I'm going to concentrate. Miranda has no concentration right now. If she tries to break my concentration by attacking next turn, uh, she'll probably miss. And if she misses, I'm going to do a devastating attack on the turn thereafter. So, of course, she's going to try to, to, to uh, disrupt my maximal concentration. That's the only smart thing for her to do. And the AI is smart enough to do it. So let's dodge. And, ah, oh no, she rolls 8, which is just enough to beat my defense rating. You know, she had to roll 8, 9, or 10. You get a random number between 1 and 10. She rolled 8. I lose my concentration. And this is pretty terrible. I mean, not terrible in the sense that I'm dead, but terrible in the sense that if she had, ah, if she had only rolled less than 8, then she would have been dead right now. Okay, I'm stunned. That means I've got a minus one attack penalty and a minus four penalty to body, mind, and spirit for nine turns. Well, nothing I can do about that. So uh, let's just um, concentrate. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I do want to get the second level. She jumps towards me. I dodge. She misses. Am I going to take the third level or not? You tell me. Shall I go for a third level of concentration? Maybe not. The reason I'm not going to do it is that the tension, you can see it, the tension here, um, that's something that rises all the time until somebody gets hit and then it, it drops a lot. Not necessarily to zero, but it drops a lot. The tension is quite high, so even if she's not concentrated, as she is right now, uh, she might still be able to hit me, so I probably need to, uh, to just attack her. Yeah, that was a, a good choice. So I roll 8, I've got huge bonuses, I easily beat her defense rating, I deal a lot of damage, Especially because uh, she tried to roll toward me, uh, which is uh, which was not smart of her. Um, so a roll is a special dodge action where if you get hit, you get hit for a lot of extra damage. But if you don't get hit, you get an attack penalty, uh, attack bonus to the person you uh, you roll towards on your next turn. Anyway, she rolled towards me. I easily killed her, dealing elf damage, and uh, she dies. Well, that means that I now absorb the power of Miranda. And as you can see, that gives me plus one attack, plus one defense, plus five health, and a stun skill. I can also increase, because she was a level one creature, uh, I can increase one of, my, uh, one of my faculties by one point. Um, 
and I hear fierce howl west. I talk about the fierce howl in a moment. So right now, let's spend that point on a faculty. Do I want body, mind, or spirit? Well, do we remember where we are? We are in the drawing room. I'll talk about the amulets in a moment, um, but let's look at the fascinating drawing first. The fascinating drawing in the drawing room will always show you the creatures in the dungeon. Um, and if you know something about the creatures in the dungeon, you may guess which of body, mind and spirit it's best to increase. So what do we see? We see the mind slug, bot a demon of rage, a jumping bomb, the wisps of pain, me, Fuffert and Mauser, Malagris, and a huge shadow behind him. Okay, uh, I'm not going to talk about all of them. I'm just going to point out that Botmal is the level 4 creature here. That means that her power is the best power I'm going to get. And Botmal's power is based on the body score. So I'm going to uh, put my point into body because I really want to, to increase my body. Um, now let's take all the stuff that Miranda has dropped here and that was already here. So the nunchucks. Are the nunchucks any good? We already examine them but let's examine the nunchucks and the rapier as you can see the nunchucks just deal more damage they're just better than the rapier so I'm going to ready the nunchucks okay then the second thing is the monk's robe what does it do it gives me minus two body but plus two mind and spirit well minus two body is bad when I've got botmal's power and want to use you don't want to have maximal body but, uh, you know, right now I don't have it. I only have the stun skill, which is mind-dependent, as you can see here in the uh, left side of the screen. So uh, let's, wear, let's wear this robe. Uh, it gives me a 1 minus 2 and 2 plus 2s. So that's good. And then I've got Metastasio's head, the crown of the empire, and Miranda's amulet. Let's look at the amulet first. Amulet. The silver amulet, shaped like the sun and imbued with magic, was given to Miranda by her father when she set out on a life of adventure. Ooh, that's a terrible typo. Life of adventure. I'm going to write that down so I can fix it before you get the non-alpha version of Kerkerkaib 9. Uh, it will reflect range attacks back to the attacker 10% of the time. Well, no reason not to wear that. Uh, you know, Botmal, who's the strongest monster in his dungeon except for the uh, end boss, uh, she has a ranged attack. She throws lightning. If it's reflected back to her, that's a good thing. So now we've got the crown of the empire and Metastasio's head. Let's check it out. The crown of the empire gives me a plus two mind bonus. Metastasio's head decreases the chance that grenades get thrown back at me. Well, I don't have any grenades yet. Uh, I'm not about to throw any grenades in uh, into other rooms. So it uh, is not very useful for me to wear the crown, uh, to wear Metastasio's hat at the moment. So let's wear the crown of the empire. Great. Um, now, right, I was going to wait until I'm no longer stunned. As you can see at the right, I've now got an effective mind score of 9, spirit score of 7, body score of 4. That's because of the monk's robe and uh, the crown of the empire. All right, so do you remember that we heard a fierce howl west? Well, that fierce howl is what the demon of rage uh, howls, I guess, whenever somebody is killed. And every time somebody is killed, the demon of rage gets stronger and it can get really strong. So um, probably the best thing for us to do is to explore the dungeon Retreat from everyone we find until we get to the Demon of Rage and then kill it. The reason I'm going to explore the dungeon before I attack the Demon of Rage is that if I destroy the Demon of Rage, I will get the Power of Rage, which is a nice power, but it's also got a drawback uh, because I can't retreat. Once you have the Power of Rage, you can't retreat and you don't want to accidentally stumble into a monster you can't handle once you've got the Power of Rage. So let's... Explore the dungeon first, retreat whenever necessary, and then return to the west where we heard the Demon of Rage. So we'll go north first. Okay, we're in the library. There are no, uh, no monsters in the library. There is, of course, a scroll analyzer in the library. There's always a scroll analyzer in the library. 
and I'm going to put as many scrolls as I can into the analyzer. Now the analyzer will break after some random number of scrolls have been analyzed, uh, but that's that's actually completely irrelevant in this game because the first scroll I analyze is a scroll of knowledge, and reading a scroll of knowledge will identify every scroll in the game for me. So the other things I had were a scroll of mapping and a scroll of shadows. I'm gonna read the scroll of mapping in a moment. Uh, I'm gonna show you what it does. This is the map of the dungeon that we have explored. Right? So we've explored four rooms. We can still go up in the entrance room. We can go south and east in the drawing room. Uh, the wisps of pain, they're, they're here. That's their little icon, as you can see here in the, uh, in the legend. Miranda's dead. But, um, well, let's read the scroll of mapping. Great. Map. Here we have the entire dungeon. Every, uh, everything that's, uh, that's there. All the rooms. Including, as you can see, one room that has no exits or entrances. So uh, we could only enter it if we found a digging tool somewhere. Now we've got some information that makes me believe that it would be a really bad idea to try to get into that room, but uh, let's not talk about that now. That would maybe spoil the surprise. Okay. Um, oh wait, we also, uh, if you remember, we were here in the drawing room and we heard the demon of rage howl to the west in the entrance hall, at least in the direction of the entrance hall. If we look at this map, we can see that the only room that lies west from the drawing room, uh, you know, there's the entrance hall and then there's one room above it. So this must be the room where the Demon of Rage is in. We already know exactly where the Demon of Rage is. Let's see how much of the uh, rest of the dungeon we can explore before we need to go there. So let's go east here to the quartering room. A large pile of human body parts lies in a corner and there are thin clouds of smoke. Uh, let's search the pile of human body parts. You'll find a couple of scrolls in there and at a certain point the rotting corpse will uh, jump out of it. That's, that's fine. I think we can handle the rotten corpse. Ooh, a scroll of summoning. Not too smart to use right now, it would summon another undead. Scroll of death. Can be useful, it will kill, it will not kill, it will damage everyone who is not undead in the room. Which can be nice, even if you're not undead yourself in some situations. Scroll of curse removal, always good. Uh, ah, the rotten corpse jumps out. Well, let's, um, let's go and uh, attack the rotten corpse. Ah, okay, so my first attack at the rotten corpse works. Five damage, it loses concentration and is rotting right leg falls off. Well, that's good. Um, okay, let's try to attack it again. Oh, this time I missed. That was not what I wanted. The Rotten Corpse attacks me. I'm gonna dodge. It unfortunately hits me, even though it misses one limb, and it hits me for nine damage. Okay, this, um, this is not what I was... Uh, Oh, it hits me again because it rolls 10. Um, this is really, really, really not what I was hoping for. Ah, good. Now this time I roll 20, which is a special critical roll. Um, dealing nine damage and it's rotting right arm falls off. Uh, let's try and hit it again. It's second leg falls off. Ah, uh, this is the way I like it. The Rotten Corpse crawls towards me, its single arm raised. Well, I'm not afraid of you, Rotting Corpse. I'm gonna kill you. I'm gonna kill you? Yes, I'm gonna kill you. The Rotting Corpse disintegrates slimily, and I hear a fierce howl west. Okay, I've done something stupid. I should have remembered that there was a Demon of Rage, and that fighting the Rotten Corpse is not smart when there's a Demon of Rage, because... Killing the Rotten Corpse will also uh, increase the power of the Demon of Rage. Also, not very smart is the fact that I'm now at 12 of 22 health. So this game is going probably going to end really badly. Um, the only way to heal in Kerkerkuip, basically the only way to heal in Kerkerkuip, is by killing monsters. 
right? Killing monsters with a level, not an undead creature like the Rotten Corpse, but killing monsters with a level heals you completely, and that's basically the only way to heal. Okay, so let's uh, let's check out the rest of the dungeon. Here there's a vast slug. We can uh, check it out and see that it's a level 3 creature. It also has two, uh, two allies, Mauser and Fafford. This is not not a fight I want to pick when I'm at 12 health. So I'm going away. So here's the south uh, entrance. The alchemical laboratory. I can take the unguentum crescendi which will allow me to increase the size of a weapon if I really want to. I have a little reason to do that right now. And uh, if I wanted to I could throw stuff into the curious machine. And the good thing about throwing stuff into the curious machine is that uh, it will turn it into grenades. So if I've got anything that is not useful to me, like the rapier, which is strictly worse than the nunchucks. Ah, a smoke grenade drops on the ground. Well, I'm also going to put the dagger in there. Why not? I'm, I'm hoping for you know something like a fragmentation grenade that will allow me to to weaken the demon of rage before it uh, it gets to me. Um, now all those scrolls and stuff might still be. Yeah, let's put the crescendi into it as well. Put crescendi a machine, a flash grenade. Okay, I've got everything that's that's basically not useful. Although I might be able to use the flash grenade to blind the smoke demon. I'm not not too certain whether. Whether it has eyes, it probably has eyes. Let's try it. So uh, throwing grenades is actually new in, uh, I mean throwing grenades into other rooms is actually new in Kerkerkruip 9. So uh, you won't be able to do this in Kerkerkruip 8 if you've got that on your computer. So I'm going to throw a flash grenade up. You, where you heard explode and the demon of rage, uh, he got pretty angry at me throwing a flash grenade. And uh, he arises from above. Now I hope that it's that he, that he's blinded. I really hope that he's blinded. If not, I uh, I don't know what to do. So let's uh, attack him. If he is blinded, he's got a big defense penalty, and this should probably work. Maybe maybe I should try to stun him. Stun demon. Yeah. What does stun do? Let's check it out. You attack the target, a successful hit deals one less damage, but stuns the target for a number of turns equal to your mind score. That's nine, that's a lot. So a stunned person has a minus one attack penalty, and a penalty on body, mind, and spirit equal to my mind divided by two, which would be four in this case. So that's actually good. Let's try to stun the demon. Ah, that's great. I uh, just beat the demon's defense rating. Deal five damage, winning it to 15 health. It unfortunately remains concentrated. You've always got a random chance of remaining concentrated. That's based on your mind score. So having a, a high mind is also good because it allows you to remain concentrated. But uh, but it's stunned. Well, that's at least one minus one attack penalty. So let's dodge. Oh God, did I really? I really. I'm fighting a blind person in the entrance hall, which is. The room, which has a red light, far too bright for the eyes of a human. You can see it right here. That gives me a minus two blinding light penalty. But of course, doesn't give you a minus two blinding light penalty if you're blind. Because you're blind, you can't be blinded. So this is like the one room in the entire game where the Demon of Rage being blinded doesn't really give me a combat advantage. That was, was, was great. Okay. Um... I'm so smart. Luckily, it misses me, and I am going to. Um, I'm going to kill it. Yeah, I'm going to kill it. Yes, I am going to kill it. This time, it loses its concentration. I'm going to kill it again. I unfortunately miss. Of course, it's gonna miss me as well, right? Yeah. Well, of course, it's gonna miss me. Dodge. Ah, it actually did miss me. Let's concentrate. I'm mildly concentrated. It is mildly concentrated. The tension is really high. It's plus four attack, so let's just kill it. Good. I... Ah, it's only got six health left. Mm, mm, yes. Yes, yes. 
Uh, I now I'm attacking with a plus eight attack bonus and a plus four damage bonus, as you can see here. It only has six health left. It's gonna die. I'm going to press the enter button, and then the demon of rage will be dead. Yes, it will be dead. Okay, I now have the power of rage. I've lost the power of Miranda. Because when you get a new power, you lose all powers that are of the same level or a lower level. So the only way to get more than one power at the same time is to kill high level creatures first and then low level creatures thereafter. And finding the right, uh, the right order in which to kill creatures is really a big part of Kerkerkaif's strategy. But I've now killed the Demon of Rage, that gives me plus 2 attack, plus 10 health, um, which is good. And I cannot retreat, which is bad. And I can howl. Now, howl is an interesting power. Let's check out howl. You make your next attack with a plus 4 attack bonus. That's really high. And a damage bonus equal to 2 plus your mind divided by 3. That would be plus 5. That's also really high. But your defense is permanently decreased by 1 point. So this is really something you need to use in desperate situations. And it, it's really good in desperate situations. Okay. I'm going to spend my 2 points on body. And... Um, that's it. Let's check out the map. I'm in the entrance hall. The mind slug is in the hall of vapors, and that's gonna he's gonna be my next target. I want to kill that slug and preferably I want to kill that slug and keep his two allies alive, because if I manage to do that, they will become my allies. So there's the room up from here where the smoke demon uh, sorry, where the demon of rage was. I'm going to go up there and check out whether there's any good stuff there. Then I'm going to the mind slug. And I'm going to, um, to probably use my Howl power in order to try and take it out. Try and take out the Mind Slug without uh, being killed by his allies. Alright, so let's, let's see what's up. It's the Columnated Ruins. Oh, there's a Scroll of Alteration here. Now, using a Scroll of Alteration is really uh, dangerous. It alters your body. It can give you some really nice... Uh, nice mutations but it could also make my body very small or very large which uh, would mean that i really wouldn't be able to use the uh, pair of nunchucks anymore because that's a medium-sized weapon and if you are gargantuan or tiny then that weapon is just not going to work for you so i'm probably not going to use the scroll of alteration at least not until i find more uh, scrolls of alteration Okay, so the whole vapor south of here, that's where the, uh, the mind slug is. I'm going to, uh, to howl. I howl with rage. I'm howling. You can see here that I'm howling. I'm in a rage. That means that I've got a plus one attack bonus, but also that I, uh, that I can't retreat. Um, well, it actually it just means that I can't retreat. I think the attack bonus has already been... Uh, been uh, put into the attack modifier there. So my next attack is going to be with a big bonus, and I'm going to use it to take out the Mind Slug. Right. The Mind Slug concentrate, Mauser concentrates, Fockard concentrates. Um, I'm going to concentrate once. Fockard rushes towards me. I'm going to dodge. He doesn't uh, overcome my defense rating. A lot of these guys are concentrating. Let me attack the mind slug. Uh, you can see that Mauser is maximally concentrated. I've got to got to think about that. Okay, so I easily beat the mind slug's defense rating because of this plus four howling bonus. Because of my plus five howling bonus, I deal uh, a lot of damage. The mind slug only has got eight health left, and now Mauser lashes out of me. What am I gonna do? Well, he's maximally concentrated. That's that's really dangerous. That's plus 8 attack, plus 4 to damage. He can hurt me for a, for a lot. What I'm going to do is I'm going to read a scroll of death. Why? Well, that's going to damage me and Mauser and Fuffert and the Mind Slug, everyone in this room. But by damaging them, it's going to make them lose concentration. So Mauser will suddenly attack me with no concentration rather than maximally concentrated. And that's just the best defense I have. So I'm going to do that. Uh, 4 damage to me, 3 damage to Mauser, 5 to Favart, 5 to the Mind Slug. And, uh, you know, it breaks their concentration. And Mauser now uh, uh, is unable to overcome my, uh, my defense. 
So let's check out the mind slug. The mind slug now has it has only three health left. Okay, it has only three health left. Let me. Let, I. I just. I need to. I need to kill that mind slug. Um, do I need to concentrate, or can I do it right now? Um, it, it might be a good idea to concentrate once. Fufford rushes towards me. I'm. Ah, he manages to uh, to damage me. Good, good. Mind slug, you're gonna die, right? Yes, he is gonna die. Seven damage, killing the mind slug. That also means that I've now lost the power of rage, uh, which is actually a good thing because, as you will remember, the power of rage made me uh, unable to retreat. So now I can, now once I've lost it, I can uh, go back to explore the dungeon without uh, getting caught up in fights I can't win. Also got three more points, which I'm going to to put in body again. Uh, Mauser and Fuffert will follow me at least until I lose the power of, power of the mind slug. Then I've got the enslave power, which allows me to attempt to enslave an enemy. And there's a whole formula here, which I'm not going to read out right now. It basically means that you 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 must try and enslave when your enemy is almost dead. I mean, if he if he's at full health, then enslave is probably not going to work. Okay, so let's check out the map again. We're in the Hall of Vapors. There's a room uh, south of here and a room east of here. We can just uh, check out. My plan now is I'm, I want to find Bodmal, uh, the level 4 creature. I want to kill her, preferably with the help of Mauser and Fuffert. Uh, I might want to use one of my packages of Ment to do that. And then once I've killed this level 4 creature, there will still be a level 1 creature and a level 2 creature. I'm then, after killing Bodmal, I'm going to kill the Wisps of Pain who will give me four levels of pain. Then I'm gonna kill the level two creature, which will drive out the power of the wisps, which is a level one uh, power from me. Give me the hardened by pain status, which gives a big bonus to body, mind, and spirit. It will be a plus four permanent bonus to body, mind, and spirit. And then with a level four and a level two power and hardened by pain, I'm gonna take on the final enemy, who, which is uh, Malagris. So let's uh, let's go and find um, let's go and find Malagris, and also let's hope that the level two creature, which we haven't seen yet, is not between me and Bobmal, because that would would make it a bit more difficult to uh, to to carry out this plan. Phantasmagoria. Okay, so here's there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of good stuff. Ah, oh, there's some stuff I really want, which is the glass cannon, uh, and there's also the um, the jumping bomb, which is not so good. Okay, take all. I'm gonna take all. The jump, I'm gonna retreat. Let's retreat. I don't think that the jumping bomb is gonna be able to, uh, to get me. No, it's not going to be able to get me. Though it would have got me if it had rolled 10, so I'm not sure whether this was so smart. Now, now I'm, okay. Okay, let's look at the uh, at the glass cannon because this is perhaps the most interesting weapon in the game. It's very powerful. It does a lot of damage. It does twelve damage, plus three attack modifier, ranged. All of that is really good. Uh, it makes you easier to hit. That's not so good, and it permanently uh, halves your health. So if I, uh, whenever you equip it, so if I equip it right now, my health will go down from thirty-two to sixteen, but. I probably want that because it's a really good weapon and uh, I mean if you find the glass cannon and you want to use it you should equip it as soon as possible I'm going to equip it right now you feel fragile I've got only 16 health left but this is probably going to be worth it uh, so let's go south yes here she is bot that's really good Fafford and Mauser are here I have Miranda's amulet, which will give me at least a 10% protection from her uh, from her attacks. And um, let's see if I can do this. So the it's it's really quite accurate, the um, the glass cannon. So I probably or can already hit her right now. Yes, I can. I easily beat Botmal's defense rating. Deal 13 damage. 
Wounding her to 11 health, as you can see, this is this is really is pretty good. Fafar tries to attack Botmal. Mauser tries to attack Botmal. They don't overcome her defense rating, but I'm just going to do this again. And I'm just going to kill her, uh, dealing 14 damage. Ah, uh, this thing is amazing. Um, it's amazing. I mean, it also means that I've got 16 health less, so I'm really fragile. And anyone who attacks me will have a, have a pretty easy time doing that, actually. But, um, well, let's, uh, I'm not going to let that stop me. So this might be the time to take off the, uh, the robe. Because I want my body to be my uh, best score right now. It's already 15. It's the Bramble's power. It's the power that, um, uh, that, that Botmal gives me. It's quite complicated. It means that I can summon brambles and these brambles will grow things they will grow thorns they will grow different kinds of fruit and whenever i want i can launch that uh, launch that stuff when i launch it it's going to do good things for me depending on the amount of thorns the kinds of fruit that there are uh, if i don't launch it then more and more powerful types of fruit will grow on the uh, on the brambles giving me better and better possible effects so it it also pays to wait a little it's uh, it's a very interesting and fun power to use actually so what, uh, what else is here? Two Unguenta Argenti, that's stuff that you can use to make a uh, to make one of your weapons silver. But I'm not going to change any of my weapons anymore, so uh, I'm not going to use that. We can go south and south. Oh, there's a pickaxe. Now a pickaxe is a digging tool, and I could use it to uh, to to go to this hidden room up here. I could go to, for instance, the columns and just dig east, and then I would be in the hidden room up here. Uh, but I've already seen something in this game that I'm not going to spoil, which uh, which makes me believe that going to that hidden room is a very stupid idea. A fun idea, but not a necessarily very smart idea. So I'm, uh, I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to use my digging tool. What I am going to do is I'm going to uh, go to the Wisps of Pain. So... I just type go to wisps and then press enter a couple of times until I'm there. And uh, uh, the glass cannon really is the best item to use against those wisps. Because it deals so much damage that their damage resistance really basically does nothing. Okay, they deal one permanent point of body damage. That's not good. They've... Ah, oh, they deal two per... Uh, they've already dealt me two permanent points of body damage. I really hate them. But uh, now they're dead. I'm going to spend this one point on body. As you can see, I've got a minus four penalty right now because of uh, of the Wisps of Pain. Here, you are in pain, minus four to body, mind, and spirit. Doesn't matter because I'm going to lose the power of the Wisps when I kill the Jumping Bomb. Let's go to the Jumping Bomb. Um, oh, there's lots of stuff here that I've forgotten to take. Scrolls of pro. Oh, I'm going to uh, to read the scroll of protection as soon as possible. That's a really great scroll. The scroll of protection just makes me uh, uh, just makes me uh, uh, invincible to the next attack. The next attack that hits me, not the bombs attack, but any attack that deals normal damage. The next attack that hits me won't do anything. Uh, I'm going to drop the scroll of the blade so that I don't ac accidentally read it, because uh, it would conjure up a blade in my hand which means that the glass cannon will be unwielded, and if I have to wield it again, that will half my health again, and I don't want that. So I'm just dropping the scroll of the blade so that I'm not, um, I'm not going to accidentally read it. Here's the jumping bomb, which is definitely not going to do anything against my awesome glass cannon and, and loads and loads of powers. I, uh, yeah. I've got the explode on death penalty, which means that if someone kills me, I can explode. And if they are almost dead, then that explosion will kill them. I can absorb their soul and I will survive the fight. I have two more points, which I will put in body. And the power of the wisps is gone, which means that I am now uh, hardened by pain. Pain hardened. And uh, that here, I'm pain hardened. And being pain hardened gives me a plus four bonus to all my stats. So now I have a 20 body score which is really high and which will make my brambles uh, grow their thorns and fruit much and much faster this is also a good point to snort the essence of rage 
giving me a plus one attack bonus. I can't retreat anymore, but hey, I've got no reason to retreat. I'll snort Mant, the drug I'm, uh, I'm using, which gives me plus one attack, plus one defense, plus one damage resistance, plus one to body, mind, and spirit. As you can see, my body is now 23, and I'm, uh, I'm going up here, right? Up was the uh, direction, yes, up to the only room that's left, which must be the room where Malagris is. Uh, up. Here he is. Ooh, lots of stuff here. Like another scroll of protection could be useful, but for now I'm going to going to uh, I'm going to first summon these brambles because the longer they've got to grow interesting stuff, the more useful it is. So there are brambles now. Concentrate, attack Malagris. 14 damage. You know this glass cannon is really good. I've got a lot of powers. We're on apprentice difficulty. As you can see, I just managed to beat his defense rating, but still. I'm uh, I'm really good to go. It's very I'm very convinced that I'm going to win this game. The thorns on the brambles grow. I've already got two levels of uh, of thorns. Let's attack Madagris again. Ha! Huh. Once again, I managed to beat his defense rating, wounding him to ten health. The thorns on the brambles grow some more. That's. Uh, Ooh, Meligoris lunges towards me. I'm just gonna dodge that attack, right? Oh yeah. Well, actually, I didn't dodge that attack. He managed to uh, to hit me, but I've got the score of protection here, minus 100% protection, zero damage, allowing me to escape. Um. Uh, well, I type attack now, and he's gonna die because he only has 10 health left, and the uh, glass cannon always does 12 or more damage. Well, that was Maligris. The brambles wither and die because, you know, there were no enemies left. You have defeated Maligris with his immense magical powers now at your disposal. It is time to teleport back to Mont Noir and pay a little visit to the prince. That means that I've won. I've scored 18 out of 18 because I've killed every monster. And um, it also means that I've now gone from apprentice difficulty to... Let's see. I think the uh, added difficulty, yes. So the next game will be slightly more difficult. It also means that the rogues gallery, which we're looking at right now, has been updated. And uh, here, Miranda, another soul I've harvested. Yeah, she's all also killed me twice. We didn't see the swarm of daggers this time. Um, we didn't see the armadillo. Well, let's not uh, let's not watch all these uh, all these pictures. I hope you enjoyed this. My first uh, new. So I, I made a couple of videos for the uh, for the original competition release, but this is the first new Let's Play video of Kerkerkruip. I hope you enjoyed it. I certainly did. I hope you learned something from it, and I'm planning to do uh, a lot more of them in the future. So, see you around.